Good morning, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to New Brunswick Lung and Bee Lung's 31st Annual Respiratory Health Symposium. I would like to introduce Carol Reimer. Carol is co-owner and healthcare consultant of Versus Consulting. She's consulted on projects regarding healthcare access in developing countries, funding models for health resources, rural health, cost comparisons between models, healthcare resourcing, and community health. As a health educator, Carol has taught at the University of New Brunswick, facilitated online courses in occupational health and wellness, and taught personal care workers employed in the home health care field. Carol earned a Bachelor of Science in Nursing from the University of Alberta and received her RN designation, and she later earned a Master of Science in Epidemiology and Community Health from the University of Calgary's Faculty of Medicine. And with that, I would like to welcome Carol. Welcome, Carol. Thanks for joining us today. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Yes, my name is Carol Reimer. I'm, uh, thank you for that introduction. And um, I'm just going to begin for me and for you guys just to take a moment to breathe. So I'm going to ask everybody just take a breath in and in again. No. And in, in again, out. If you have a window, please look at something green, which we're supposed to do every 20 minutes. Take 20 seconds and look 20 feet or 20 meters, depending on what whether you're metric or imperial. Anyway, thank you for that time. Just wanted to just anchor us, like lower my own cortisol levels and anchor us in just the privilege that we have to have healthy lungs. People have talked this morning about how high the incidence of them, how, what the burden of disease is for um, lung disease, for people with lung disease in the province. And um, just to be appreciative of the health that we have and realize the importance of the work that NB Lung is doing. You got my introduction and um, just wanted to say that my whole career basically has been in community health and that's where my passion is and that the opinions that I share today are my own and don't reflect the position of the organizations that I'm in. I'm going to talk about lung health and it's important some the incidents and burdens and then some observations going forward. Of course, as people were doing all this morning is looking at things from a population health perspective and um, keeping in mind, as both Monsieur Landre and um, previous speaker was saying, that we um, have to take into account not just the disease, its incidence, and the direct correlations, but also that there are all kinds of uh, health determinants that influence the impact that lung disease has on us as New Brunswickers and around the world, of course. Starting with lung cancer, although you guys have had a super good message on that at all already, um, we see as we're looking that um, in New Brunswick compared to Canada, we have an increased rate of lung cancer in Canada as a whole and in New Brunswick. So this is our 20 year trend and it's going upwards, which is discouraging. We do have Fortunately, a downward trend both in COPD and in asthma, although in COPD, we're still worse off than the rest of the country. Um, and we'll talk about some of the factors that we think are, are um, contributing to that. So lung cancer, as you heard, it's the number one most commonly diagnosed and leading killers of all cancers in Canada. In fact, it worldwide, it is num in Canada, it's worldwide. It, I mean, it's number one, lung cancer is number one, and COPD is number three in all preventable diseases. So um, that means that we can have a huge impact on um, the virulence and incidence and the impact of, of lung cancer and indeed on lung health. And um you can see that our five-year survival rate is very low, 22%, um, as opposed to 91 for prostate, 89 breast, and 67 for colorectal cancers. And um, 
more people will die of lung cancer in 2024 than breast, prostate, and colon, colon cancer combined, which might be surprising in comparison to how much marketing information we get about these different cancers. So, um, you know, as is one of the purposes of this is like increasing the um, knowledge and just um, the importance of lung of lung disease is important for like getting further funding. So in lung cancer, although our incidence climbing, our death rate has been decreasing. We do have um, it is you know the five year death rate is lowering. So that although by the time you get to stage four, we are they have very low. Um, expectations of life it still is we're doing better we're doing we're going in the right direction that's what it is what are some of the leading causes you already heard about um, smoking causes like about 72 percent of the cancers they think secondhand smoke and then radon gas is one of the significant contributors especially to us in new brunswick um we also have like the rest of Canada and indeed in the world, there's all kinds of other pollutants that also contribute. And we do have evidence of that in the um, in the data coming up, in the slides coming up. So yes, well, and and um, now it does say smoking, and recently, of course, like the data from before has been about tobacco smoking, and that's where the bulk of the data comes from. But increasingly, we are seeing the impact of vaping, and on cannabis. So um, yes, there are some studies that say up to sixteen percent is like has some vaping related issues. So we looked at the map from radon and you can say, see in a similar way that across the country, we have a vast range of incidences of lung cancer. Depends on where you live. Um, this information is from 2005, the latest information. So we've had a lot of significant changes and we will are seeing the impact of that now as we're seeing our decrease in incidents overall, that we've made changes in work safe policies, smoking incidents has decreased. And um, so we have made some changes that will hopefully be contributing to these numbers being better. But as um, Sir Landry was also saying, we're indicating really that some of our data is quite old and we tend not to necessarily be good uh, at having integrated knowledge and databases. So it's sometimes hard for us to um, make data driven decision made really. You can see as we're looking, yeah. Um, at our cancer rates compared to other provinces that um, ours are significantly higher. And um, there are um, like why New Brunswick? Why are we doing so much more poorly than other provinces? Some things were intimated earlier. Of course, we have um, some low um, socioeconomic status numbers. Um, we have one of the highest incidences of smoking and um, in the country. We have some access to treatment issues and... Um, There's also, we talk about health spending that's in, that's, you know, top of the news these days, of course, as we approach the election, we're talking about how we spend, not just spending our healthcare dollars, but how we spend them. And although that we have the third highest um, spending rate per capita in the country, we spend significantly less on community and public health. So we don't spend as much about as pre on prevention and promotion as other places. And as Mr. Laundry was saying at the beginning of his um, talk is that, you know, having the ambulance at the bottom of the hill is not as effective as starting at the top. And we really, it should have been, in my opinion, a lesson that we learned from COVID 
where we spent initially money on um, incubators and didn't invest in test in you know testing strips and masks and people to do screening and all the things that and um, organizing immunization centers so we tend to in our system focus on the treatment end as opposed to the front end and the and the prevention end which of course is another um, reason that radon is uh, awareness is like such an important thing um yes and we even have one of the highest um, numbers of doctors per capita in the country. And even so, we have difficulty, you know, getting access and appropriately quickly uh, quick access. So there's certainly work that we need to be doing. So these are some of the things that are contributing. Now, um, although um, lung cancer is, of course, a significant problem. There are other diseases that really are very important. And COPD is one of those. It is actually second highest reason um, to access care in all of the um, developing countries. It is, as you can see, the second that. leading cause of hospitalizations in New Brunswick. And that's only the first one is giving birth. So really it's the highest disease-oriented cause of hospital admissions in New Brunswick. And it's either a top or second in all of these health zones. Um, in zone three and five, it's actually um, heart disease is ahead of COPD, which is interesting. And, you know, potentially due to um, the socioeconomic status and uh, smoking levels, industrial levels that differ from the other parts of the country. Um, and um, we spoke during the radon talk about the cost to the healthcare systems. And so you were talking about um, the cost per day. And COPD has on average 7.2 hospital days per admission. So um, and it's not only one of the highest hospital admissions, but one of the highest hospital readmissions. And um, that, if you compound that with the numbers we heard, that is, as you heard, a significant amount of money. Now, one of the difficulties, of course, that we have in health planning is that we have difficulty getting specific data on specific um, issues. Now we can look at data. We have data from StatsCan. We have data from CAIHI and from the New Brunswick Health Council. There is data that from Vitalite and Horizon. There's data from the Department of Health. Um, but none of these systems are integrated. And so doing a comparison on, on um, actual numbers and integrating all those numbers to make knowledgeable um, decisions about what's going, what we should do is difficult. Horizon itself has five different information systems that have not previously been integrated with physicians systems. So that really our ability to do any kind of data-driven decision-making is very difficult. And um, it's something that um, the health system here is working hard to um change and work toward an integrated healthcare system, information system, and um, also there's increased um, collaboration between these different organizations to try and um, align our information in ways that we can do appropriate and meaningful decisions. Because our, in Canada, because in Canada, we don't have a funding model that's driven by data, then the need and the impetus to report is very low. So compared to other countries in the world, we have very poor data collection, actually. We, um, for instance, with flu before COVID, we did a very, a very bad job, actually, of reporting our flu levels. There's an international flu registry every week. Every country is supposed to register what kind and what numbers of flu they get. So, you know, because of that, we've 
you know, it's changed how we do our decisions and we are moving towards a more rational way of decision making. And I think that's a good thing. Anyway, that's one of my digressions and one of my like, you know, rants. Okay. So which going on about hospitalizations for COPD. So we've increased that in the last, um, you know, in the last 10 years, it's increased the number of hospitalizations that we do. And um, we talked about the determinants of health. And you can see here that although for the highest neighborhoods, it's gone down slightly, for the lower levels, um, lowest income levers populations, that has gone up significantly. And um, that just reiterates how important looking at the front end of health is important, that we have to be looking at people's access, people's nutrition, people's knowledge about disease. And um, in order to make a real impact on what's happening in the health of New Brunswickers overall. Okay. Now, we talked, of course, already about all lung diseases are highly correlated and related to smoking. Smoking is the number one cause of all of these lung, these uh, the chronic lung diseases. And um, it's, as we saw, inversely correlated to education level, income level, and um, it has a strong correlation with other comorbidities. Um, we have, um, in terms of smoking, we've made some, you know, we have certainly made some inroads into the, um, the amount of smoking, the number of people who are smoking and that's, or smoking tobacco. And, um, but in 2017, there was a study that said that 20% of youth are open to smoking. Now it didn't determine what kind of smoking they were doing. So this, um, another study said like 16% are open to vaping, which is also, you know, it's not any better and in some cases worse than tobacco. So um, we still have a lot of work to do in terms of that, even though we've come a long way. The other um, interesting um, data is that we talk about other comorbidities, we talk about other issues that happen, but obesity and physical exercise are also correlated with um, COPD. And in our um, pro programs and marketing and pushes, to improve uh, lung health, um, we haven't been as focused around drawing in those factors about obesity and physical exercise. The heart people are good about that, of course, but um, I was just surprised and interested to note that also it's a, uh, it has an impact on COPD. Now it has a correlation and of course that um, we'll see right is like the quality of life impact it's hard to tell some of this stuff is the chicken and the egg because of course if you have a chronic lung disease then your activity level is curtailed and you can see that um people with copd not only have poor perceived health but are faced with difficulties with activities and need for support for daily living and are unable to work. So although we talk about hospitalization rates and the impact and the cost of um, hospital care and health care in that way, primary care, the, um, the real burden of disease of, uh, you know, of COPD and other diseases is in the impact that it has on people's daily life. So their um, 
daily activities of living, their quality of life indexes, that these are highly significant in COPD. And those costs are partly healthcare costs, but they are costs to society as a whole. So these people need more social, they may need, um, you know, disability insurance or disability, they go in disability pay. They may need personal support at home. And um, never mind the stress and the impact that it has on their own family caregivers. So when we are looking at the impact and cost of these diseases, it's not just in the cost to the acute system, but it's also a cost to the system as a whole. And um, that actually has a bigger impact, really, than even just the, well, even just, but the hospital is one fragment of um, the whole system of health. Now, I am, just wanted to share with her, that Horizon actually has a program, it's called um, Inspire, and it is um, to do with early screening of COPD as well as education programs. And it has decreased the number of readmissions to hospital. And um, that makes that's a significant cost saving. You can see that um, of the people who are participating, that most of them have a moderate amount of disease. A quarter have over a quarter have uh, severe um, COPD. And um, you can see that there's a number of options too that have increased, you know, how you can access care. We talked about access to care, which is really important in preventing, you know, further decline and maintenance of your disease and improved quality of life. So that there is this program, telecare is there, of course, and um, there are other initiatives in terms of getting access to support. Now, I'm just going to talk briefly about asthma. I'm going to check my time. Zip. I'll zip now. Um, because it's a significant thing. We talked about precursors and comorbidities. And asthma is something that, you know, if um, untreated and severe can have impacts for COPD later on. We have um, about one in 10 New Brunswickers with um, asthma, one in five kids, and the most chronic, common chronic disease among children. Hospitalization rates have decreased significantly, as have diagnostic rates. Some of that is due to um, our increased treatment patterns and availability of treatment in New Brunswick in the last really just five to 10 years. And um, also, about 10 years ago, there was a change in our diagnostic procedures that kind of decreased the numbers. So we were by almost a third over diagnosing. So that is, we've done some course correction. And you can see about 40% more prevalent in First Nations, Inuit and Métis communities than in the general Canadian population. And when we were talking again about um, the determinants of health, it's really important for us to remain community focused so that we um, bring and provide and opportunities and services for those communities that have increased need and perhaps have had less historical opportunities to have those have those. Um, we said that asthma is downward, and that's good. We talked about a few reasons for that um, and why you might have that. Obviously, if you have alert allergies, if you have family members, and then the risks of um, low birth weight, premature and prematurity, as well as um, environmental factors. Again, obesity and physical activity are very important in um in dealing with asthma, preventing, make and improving, those are very, very important. And um, yeah, and we underestimate that, especially with kids with asthma, where people tend to be a little bit more protective then and not allow them to have as much physical activity. All right, we have Horizon has four clinics, Vitalite has four clinics, and there's numerous helplines. So we've got lots of services. Just briefly, I know that we're, I'm moving on in my time. So I just wanted to talk about infectious lung disease. 
um, Ms. Yolandri talked about RSV and the importance of immunization and who qualifies for that. And that's very important because we've had, we've seen an increase in the um, virulence for, um, in adults in the last five years. Um, that it's really important to get in, uh, immunized against anything you can. Of course, COVID, we're getting a new one at the end of October. So please reboost. Influenza, our vaccine is coming again at the end of October. It should start to be available in New Brunswick. Um, pneumonia is available for a specific as and RSV is it's available in specific uh, populations. And the other one's pertussis. Now we you guys have all heard probably on the news that there is um we're having a whooping cough epi epidemic increased in incidence of whooping cough. Um probably due to a couple factors. One is COVID, where not only did people start, you know, we kind of had a vaccine scare issue. I mean, everybody was there for that. <laughs> also, because of COVID, there was some interruptions with early childhood vaccinations. There was also a period of time about 10 years ago um, where we changed from grade nine to grade seven. So there's a couple of years gap. So when we're seeing this pertussis outbreak, there's kind of like a uh, increase in around like six to 10, which would have been maybe during COVID, they didn't get their great, they, you know, their uh, booster before they went to school. And then another one late teenager, which would have, you know, maybe accounted for the change in the dates of herd immunization. Also, so check who has this. Also adults should get a booster every 10 years of all your adult vaccines. So that would include pertussis. So if you are at least 10 years from grade nine and you haven't been boosted and as, as an adult, then you need to have a booster. That will include pertussis. And it is a, uh, it is part of our regular vaccine um, plan. So you can go to your health provider um, or a clinic and get that. So I highly recommend that everybody do, do that, especially people, of course, who are in contact with babies or vulnerable people. And of course, right, get immunized, wear a mask, wash your hands, cover your cough, you know, do the appropriate cough covering, stay home when you're sick. A lot of us have the opportunity um, to be work from home. So if you're sick, please stay home. And um, we did such a great job our incidence of all these infectious disease went down so much to practically nil over COVID. And then we have had like three or four uptakes already in COVID and influenza and RSV already this year when we should not be getting any until at least December. So um, please do your part. And um, even in terms of us being advocates, um, ventilation in schools is a problem which is one of the reasons why you know everybody comes home sick all the time so if you or school in your area has ventilation issues please be an advocate for those people all right mm -hmm. i yeah. think we have, <laughs> yes, you've done you've done a great job. We just have like about one minute left and we have two quick questions okay. or a couple of quick questions. Okay. Um, and they'll have to be fairly quick because I we just really wanted to hear the last of what you yes. had to say okay. there. Um, the first question, and it's a quick one, are there any stats on pulmonary rehabilitation programs in New Brunswick? Yes. Well, this is with this Inspire program. There is some initial statistics, like I wasn't able to get the exact numbers, but you can, um, there are statistics. I, they're still housed within the health authorities and within the Department of Health. Okay. So we have, a, anyway, so yeah, they're not exactly analyzed or synthesized is probably what the problems are. But yes, we do have those. Okay. How available they are. Now uh, this, that, this uh, sorry to interrupt you. This next one probably ties into that a little bit. Have you seen any statistics on the prevalence of pulmonary fibrosis in New Brunswick as an RT? It seems the percentage of people with fibrosis on my caseload has increased significantly over the past few years. And we'll have to make that quite quick because it's time for 
our next person? Yes, there is an increase. I don't have the exact numbers, but there is an increase. Um, and um, yes, there is an increase. I don't know how old those people are on your list, but I mean, part of it is like um, our aging population is that it probably it tends to be, become more critical as people age. And it is like related to these other um, health, other, other lung diseases. Uh, we have started actually a couple things. One is we now have the ability to take lung transfers in New Brunswick, which is a new thing in the last year, I think. So we actually are able to take donations of lungs. The second thing is that we are, um, we have begun like screening opportunities for lung disease. So um, that is going to help us capture these things earlier so we can do, you know, some more preventive work often as, you know, we said about lung cancer is like often by the time people's symptoms get bad enough, then really people are really in a, you know, palliative yeah. stage. So, um, so just quickly for my own information. So the screening, is it going to be similar to other screenings like for colorectal and stuff where you can self-identify that you want to be screened? Right now it is for specific groups if you are high risk and mostly that's about being a smoker okay. or you have some of these other comorbidities. Okay. So right. it's a relatively new thing. I think in New Brunswick, it's been longer established in Ontario, mm -hmm. but um, we are in the process of, I mean, you can approach your primary care person about that. Okay, great. Thank you so much. And we appreciate you being here today and for your time. Thank, Thank you, you all Carol. for your time and allowing me to share. Thank you.